I like cities that are as big as this one. I like the bright lights and the fast pace. Everything goes fast. Everything is packed with first impressions waiting to happen because everyone is looking for it. Everyone's looking for love at first sight. Hey Frenchy, are you ready for a quick briefing? Dr. Jose Ferrer was found dead in his office by Matt, the janitor, just around midnight. The victim was shot twice by an unknown firearm of a small caliber. Unfortunately, no prints were found on the weapon. The death is roughly estimated at 11 p.m. From what we can tell about the position of the body, we assume Dr. Ferrer knew his attacker. From what we can see, it doesn't look like he was trying to run away. Jack, we really need your help on this one. A dust devil. A set of bloody footprints. Prints of a woman's shoes in a perfect circle. A picture of Dr. Ferrer. It reads, Dean's Award for Excellence in Teaching. Wow, that's a lot of diplomas. This is absolutely boring. That's a blonde wig. It's locked. I was coming out of the elevator when I saw a blonde woman at the end of the hallway. I just thought she was lost or something, so I asked if she needed some help. I guess I scared her or something, cause she rushed out of the stairs. By the time I got there, she was gone. Only an hour later, after I finished cleaning the hall, I went to Dr. Ferrer's office. I saw him dead, so I called 911. I was gonna clean his office, I do it every day. I think Dr. German was in his office. I remember the lights were on. He usually closes the lights when he leaves. Nobody could have entered the building after 5. The door is electronically locked, so you have to use an ID card to enter. Yeah. Unless you ring the buzzer and someone lets you in. Nah. It's only a mag lock. It doesn't record any data. Only two people that I know who have a card are Dr. Frere and German. Yeah? Dr. Frere and I were buddies. He was really cool and we used to talk about baseball together. He sometimes gave me tickets to the Bombers. I don't know. He was such a cool guy.
Yes, I'm Dr. Truman. Anything I can do to help, officer? It's a terrible tragedy. What happened, I mean. I was working in my office until 8 or 8.30 p.m. I remember stopping by Dr. Ferris' office to say goodbye when I left. He was working on his computer. Well, that's possible. I, I may have left lights on, but don't you have anything more important to investigate? Well, that, that's right. I, I thought I'd come back to work on some files, but I was just too tired to come back to the office. Last time I checked, leaving your lights on was not a crime, officer. No, I'm single and I live alone. That would be me, Joe, Matt, and Lucy. Lucy? She's a secretary. Perfect terms. Joe and I were colleagues and good friends. We had collaborated on several research projects in the past. We also played tennis together. We developed a novel and minimally invasive procedure to treat arthritis. We also owned various patents related to hip replacement surgery. Well, Joe's death is hardly the best thing that could have happened. In fact, it's an absolute disaster for the clinic. But in any case, that is the least of my worries right now. I've lost a colleague and a friend. I only know her by name, only because I clean her office, but I never met her. I'm always working night shifts. Yes, I am Dr. Ferrer's administrative assistant. Uh, I was with my fiancé. I left around 4 p.m. I always leave after the last patient is gone. I asked Dr. Farrer and German if they needed anything else and left. Dr. Farrer was on the phone with his wife. Oh yes, they were so nice together, the perfect couple. Mrs. Farrer is such a nice, pretty lady. Dr. Farrer was a handsome man, too. Yes, I believe they were good friends. You're kidding, right? Dr. Farrer was such a good man. He was always bringing flowers or candies. Everybody loved him. He was the best boss ever. Steve is a nice person, too. Once you know him, he can show himself friendly. No, I don't think so. No, it contains confidential patient information. Yes, I am Elena Ferrier. I know who you are, Detective. Please, come in. That's an old book. It smells old and musty.
Uh, yes, that's that's correct. Look, it has no connection with what's happening right now. What are you trying to pull? Are you an MD or a detective? You do your job and I'll do mine, all right? I take it from my heart. Natalos used to treat superventricular tachycardia. Are you satisfied? Since you've decided to put it that way, I have nothing further to say until I see my lawyer. No! Absolutely not! <sighs> Joe knew about it, and of course he wasn't pleased with the situation, but we've never fought about it. Look, I'll come clean about something. I lied. I wasn't home last night. I was with Lucy, our secretary. After leaving the office, I went directly to this hotel in Waterside Drive. We just didn't want anybody to know about the two of us. I paid with my credit card, and I still have the receipt. And that should prove my innocence. I am so sorry. It's just that Steve didn't want a relationship to be known. Steve told me what to say. He said I wouldn't really lie if I say that I was with my fiancé. Of course. What's the patient's name? Absolutely. Diosse and I were together for five years, and we've never had an argument. We met at a fundraising cocktail five years ago. It was love at first sight. And two years later we were married. I moved to the big city and... We lived happily ever after. But now... Now... He's dead. I'm sorry. Oh, God, no. Diose was a gentleman. He was doing volunteer work. He was involved in the community. His patients loved him. Everybody loved him. I was sleeping. Diose called in the afternoon to let me know he'd be home late. He wanted to work at the clinic. And around nine, I took some sleeping pills and went to bed. I have a master's degree in art history. I am a gallery manager. I own a prestigious art gallery downtown. But it's doomed to be closed. Nowadays, the gallery is not profitable, and for me, it's just a hobby anyway. Sorry, it doesn't tell me anything. Ah, really? Is she an artist? Well, I don't know her anyway. Well, I meet so many artists that... It is possible that we've been introduced once, and I don't remember. I am Elizabeth. How can I help you? Yes, I am Dr. Ferrer's patient. I, I am struck. Dr. Ferrer is dead? I would be happy to answer your questions, Detective, but I doubt I know anything useful. Here. I was in my loft all night working on a painting. No, I'm just as patient. I had a car accident two years ago and was referred to Dr. Ferrer last year. I am under a medical and physical program to evaluate if I need hip surgery. 
Yes, I can't go anywhere without it. Why? What? It doesn't prove anything. It could be any other patient. <sighs> okay, I owe you some explanations. As you can see, I am an artist. Dr. Farrow liked my work, and he kindly offered to help me and give a push to my career. He used his connections to organize various expositions in public libraries and museums. In return, I was a featured artist at his last fundraising event. Two of my sculptures were sold at auction to raise money for research. <laughs> It turned so well. This is just what I needed to break out in the big city. An anonymous collector ordered ten bronze pieces. Can you imagine? Hey, Jack. You're late again. This is our primary suspect in the Ferrer case, Elizabeth Marquis. Unfortunately, she didn't survive the crash. We believe that she fell asleep at the wheel, since there were no signs of breaking. She ended up in the post. <sighs> What a mess. But on the other hand, this is very convenient. Our killer dies in a car accident, so we can close the Ferrer case. Jack, I know this isn't how we wanted the case to end up, but. I want to thank you for the work you did. Good job. At last sight. We can close the Ferrer case. Good job. Hey, Jack. I ran some tests on the victim. I have found zolpidem in her blood. That's a powerful sedative used for the treatment of insomnia that may be sold only on prescription. I accessed her medical records, and Elizabeth didn't have a prescription for that drug. Also, no sleeping pills were found in her purse or in the car. Due to the high concentrations found in her blood, if you ask me, I believe that she was drugged. Your intuition was right. The same old smelly book again. I should pay this bookstore a little visit. Dark sun, but. Looks more like strawberry cheesecake to me. The doll. Kill bunny. Bunny kill. Greetings, detective.、Uh, let me see.、Uh, yeah, I recognize that book indeed. I sold it to a gentleman about two weeks ago. I remember he was a good doctor. See, I remember. <laughs> oh, very easy, detective. See, that book is very rare. It was edited and published by a Scottish firm that went out of business more than 50 years ago. So it is discontinued, and that's why it is very rare. 
I worked hard to find the two copies ordered by the gentleman. Then, a couple of days later, another man came for the same book. <laughs> See, it is very strange, I must say. I don't know, but I talked to the doctor about my hair falling. See? <laughs> Let me sing. Yeah, I have this in my records. Uh, somewhere. <laughs> ah, see? You are welcome, good detective. Hey, Detective. Of course I recognize that volume. It's the book of the month in our reading group. Well, it's a poetry club. Our elect circle of members have been meeting on a monthly basis since 1992. The group meets once a month at one of our homes. We have dinner, drink wine, and, of course, discuss the book. The last person to host dinner is the chair and presides the discussion. Yes, Dr. Fair is an assiduous member of the club. What do you want to hear? I don't know what to tell you. The guy seems so... immaculate. Perfect. But I'm going to tell you something about him, though. The guy is shady. I would not be surprised if the sophisticate was involved in suspicious stories and his legend was a teradiddle. A teradiddle. You got me right, Detective. I can't abide him. His perfectness goes even to reading books better than the rest of us. Oh, of course, the ladies are all delighted to hear him lecture for hours. They worship him. Yeah, that's it. The cult of Dr. Fair. I don't know. Perhaps he ordered a copy for another member. No, I'm not good with faces and names. There's the doctor, and the pretty hairdresser, the fat housewife. We have currently eight members, but not everyone is diligent. Well, honestly, it's not my choice to pick a book that is out of print for decades. We take turns choosing the book, and the only rule we have is to choose books we wouldn't normally read. Fortunately, Dr. Fair found a cunning bookstore around the corner which had a privileged link with a European print shop. I wouldn't have done without all that trouble finding that volume. The girl who chose it is kind of weird anyway. She's a goth. A real freak show, I tell you. Elizabeth. Yes, that's correct. That's her name. I was working. I work at Java World, an equitable coffee shop. My pleasure. Is the doctor in trouble? A poetry club? Uh, I doubt that Yosei would be involved in such a thing. Uh, uh. <clears throat> Elizabeth told me to come, that she had discovered who done it. When I arrived, the door was left open, and I, I don't remember anything. I, I don't know. My head hurts, but... I'm okay, I guess.
The name of Elizabeth's killer is hidden in that painting. The killer was probably hiding the clue when he got interrupted by Francis. E.F. Elena Ferrer She has both a motive and access to sleeping medications. Let's visit our gallery downtown. I was waiting for you, detective. I knew you would come. Isn't it a nice and rich gallery? It took me a lifetime to gather such a valuable collection. I am a great gallery manager. I know what's selling now. I know what's going to be hot tomorrow. Elizabeth would have never been as popular as she is today. Dead. As for Jose, I had enough of his little act, Mr. and Mrs. Perfect. And these two fooling around together was the last straw. <laughs> if it wasn't for you, Detective, I would have committed the perfect crime. Mrs. Fair? Cyanide. She tried to commit suicide, but she'll be fine. Just when I thought that everything was over, I got the news. Dr. German had been murdered.